Hi, I'm Noble Go, and I've been so happy to be asked to write a new Obon song to welcome people back into the circle uh, of Obon after missing for two years. So this piece is called Kangye, which means gathering of joy. And we tried to, to, to put into it the sense of ritual or coming together in this to gathering. But also I wanted a sense of fun and what are the things that we're thinking about when we're dancing, you know, or preparing to dance. So it has some of that element to it as well. You're going to hear in this music elements of gagaku, the sound of the sho and tsutsumi and the yells and things like that that maybe you don't normally hear in uh, Obon, but we're trying to combine the very ancient and the new. <clears throat> so this movement, the first movement, comes from the dance that uh, goes along with uh, gagaku, it's called bugaku. And uh, the first movement is stepping to the right and, okay, so you're just stepping to the right and stamping on three. So one, two, three. Okay, that's the first movement. Then we're going to go to the next one, two, three, four. And then we're going to, it's sort of a bow. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's all. So this dance is very simple. So this is it. Okay, this is the first part. Step to the side, to the right. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Step to the side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, turn. So the second time you do it, you're going to clap twice. Each time you turn, you clap. Or each time you clap, you turn. So uh, we always start with our right foot, OK? So let's just do that part once. Starting with your right foot, we're going to do the series twice. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Steps to the right. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two claps. That's the first section. Now the second section <clears throat> is the more a story part of this. And so uh, it's the call into the circle, okay? So this is familiar to Obon dancers. Right, two, three, touch. Left, two, three, foot. That's easy, right? That's familiar to us. We're gonna do starting with the right foot twice. Then after that, we're going to tie our obi. So we're going to reach in the front with your right foot back and tie and then turn the obi. Okay? So we're, we do right, two, three, touch, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got it? <laughs> Let's one more time. Okay, I'm counting in eights this time. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reach behind you, tie five, six, twist it around from left to right. Okay? Now, the second time you do this series, we're going to tie our hachimaki. All right? So we're going to do the same thing twice. One, two, three, and calling, two, three, four. One, two, wrap it around your head. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, again, every time you turn, you clap. So we'll do that second part, starting with the right foot again. Right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's the second section. Let's do the whole second half, okay? The first time we're tying our obi. Second time we're tying our hachimaki, okay? <clears throat> right? <laughs> okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Obi, one, two, three, four, five, six. Twist it around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hachimaki. And five, six, seven, eight. So that's all it is. Over and over and over. Back from part A to part B. And we go back to part A again. And we wanted to make this dance so simple that you just forget about it, you know? And just dance. That's what yu yo means, just dance. Again. Two claps. Come into the circle. Call Obi. Tie into the and turn. Come into the circle. Hachimaki. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two claps. Look 
glass. Forget the dance. Don't worry. It's in your body. Forget yourself. No worry. But no hazakashi. To be asked to write an Obon song after two years of COVID really was an opportunity that I saw because I missed Obon and I know everybody else did, you know? So that was, that was the impulse. Uh, but before even I was uh, invited to do this, uh, I had written some poetry about missing Obon. And um, I posted it and I just kept it, you know. So that became one of the cornerstones of the piece. Um, also, I've done uh, several other Obon songs, but usually I have to beg for money <laughs> to re record it. And so this was sort of a, di a different situation where I knew that we had money to go in the studio to record it. And I knew that we could do it uh, without that kind of a struggle involved. Uh, so what happened was, uh, it was simple. I mean, how do you call people together? Uh, the idea was to call us together after this long distance and being in a squares <laughs> for two years, uh, adapting to that life. And um, so that was the lyric and the feeling. I was thinking about the feeling and I was thinking about Bonodori Uta, how the opening of ritual of Obon to step into the circle, to, to, to come and gather in the circle happens. So, I started thinking, for some reason, and I can't say why, about the show and how the show has this calling feeling to it. Um, and then I was thinking about how could we involve musicians from different areas uh, who have been, you know, key in the development of Asian American music, actually. And so I thought of Mark Izu, of course, and then Kenny Endo, um, Derek, and uh, Kaoru, Kaoru Watanabe. And I uh, 
wanted to have the sense that the musicians also were coming together and also styles of obon and styles, styles of Japanese music. So obon style has one kind of feeling, but then I wanted to have this deeper ritualistic sound and and I'm because I'm at Senshin Buddhist Temple and because I've been around Bugaku and Gagaku, even though I don't myself play, I, I hear the music and I see how they do the dance. And so I was wanting to connect us as Japanese Americans to this older, ancient form of, of, of sound, of music and ritual and movement uh, that maybe we wouldn't ordinarily bring into Obon, but we would have a chance to sort of have the feeling of what that was. So, but I didn't want the whole song to be that way because it would be sort of heavy, you know, just to keep it in that. So I was, and I, so I went back to the poem that I wrote, I miss Obon, I miss, and I, I had talked about missing how we go into the dressing room and, and uh, people dress us and tying the obia, what things we bring, what uh, what things we bring to Obon, what kind of, what people wear. I was thinking about little girls in their first kimonos, holding hands to their batans, you know, uh, for many of, and I did this myself to my own grandchild. Bringing my grandchild to Obon was a big deal. And, and the first uh, Yuyo, the first Obon piece that I wrote in, in, in English that Reverend Moss commanded me to do, when we did that, I saw a lot of grandparents holding their grandchildren and dancing in that circle. And uh, so this is an intergenerational uh, piece in that way. Uh, this Obon is one the one event I think that younger people and older people uh, participate in equally and enjoy equally. Um, so I wanted that sense of that. So the, the lyric of Issei, Nisei, Sansei, Yonsei, that sort of rang in my ears as well. Uh, so th these are some of the elements that came into the music. And, uh, and then I always try to find some melodic thing that, that you can hang on to. So come into the circle was the melody and the, uh, and the repetition uh, that, uh, that, that I heard in my head. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle in a way, putting all these things together and dreaming a lot. I dream a lot, I, you know, uh, at night and in the morning, just in the empty space, I, I just let whatever happens, happens. And then I go to Derek and we start <laughs> uh, working on it. And Derek uh, Nakamoto has been a long time partner in my music making. And he always makes things come alive and, and uh, finds ways of integrating things that you don't think might fit together, fit together. So Nobuko always will develop a sketch of her song, you know, with, with things, elements that are very important to her lyric, melody, rhythm. Uh, we also, uh, understanding the nature of what her composition is going to be used for, and having me you know, attending Obon celebrations and uh, being a part of helping assemble some of the collections, right, at Senshin, I, I became aware of the form, the feeling, and how the music needed to uh, be relevant in its setting. And I think with this piece, what Nobuko said earlier is very important, you know, her wanting to reach back, uh, reach back, simplify. Uh, incorporating different elements of Japanese 
music, bagaku. Uh, and I love the idea of bringing in people, uh, musicians from around the country to show the, the, the wide scope of uh, Japanese American musicians here. So it, it was, it began with the fundamentals. You, the, the piece had to feel good. It had to have it, it is authentic, a nature that would just lead, lend itself to the dance. Uh, and, and then it's, the fun part is keeping up with Nobuko's ideas. <laughs> Sorting them out, departmentalizing, it just comes out as it would with any artist. Uh, she's, it, inspiration just comes and she throws it out there and uh, I help her kind of separate everything and, and try and make musical sense of it arrangement wise. The other important thing is uh, it had to be danceable. It had to feel good and the music had to really pull you into wanting to put your foot down <laughs> uh, because that's what Obon does. Uh, and um, if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't dance well, uh, then people ev eventually are not gonna, uh, are going to abandon it, you know. But uh, so it was really important to have the right rhythm and the right that that the, the, the don't, you know, that first beat to really make you want to to jump in the circle and and, and the repetition of it also the hypnotic nature of it. This is a little longer piece than most of the Obon songs. It's six and a half minutes, one time through. So it's a little longer. Purposely, we made it longer because uh, in Dog and Damas, a lot uh, through the years, the idea of repetition and simplicity and, um, and almost going into a trance because it's mindless. Uh, we wanted to really, uh, especially with the dance, keep it really simple. So it's it's really not complicated. It's really easy to to, to do physically. Uh, you can do it sitting in a chair if you want to, <laughs> or you can do it as as younger people will with deeper knee bends and 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 uh, you know jumping in the air, whatever. But uh, and so with that, you know. Uh, e Elaine and I uh, visited with uh, Reverend Moss, and it was a really interesting session that we had uh, putting it together because I really uh, uh, picked out a, a move from Gagaku. That's the only thing I did. I picked out a move from Gagaku, and then I, and just because that I knew that that was the first step, and then. You know, Reverend Moss came in and and he had he showed us video of something that he had seen in a Bhutan that that at folk dance that and and then e Elaine did her magic on it <laughs> and uh, did uh, details that I that I wouldn't have done uh, and and thought about. So it really became. I love this that it became a very collective. Uh, a collective moment that we we communally uh, made this happen. Well, in general, Nobuko does have her ideas, and we just expand upon it, and we just throw in movements and find out what works uh, for um, this kangye. Uh, Reverend Moss, yeah, threw in some ideas and uh, we kind of fine tuned it and made everything fit. What he talks about is, seems for me, very relevant to my life. I guess generationally, he's experienced and uh, things that have opened my eyes to. And I find myself thinking, yeah, that's right. So um, I think he has a cult following <laughs> because he does uh, relate to everyone there who's listening to him. 
So um, I've heard the, the term Kodaniism, <laughs> where he has his own following, <laughs> his own religious following. And uh, so I, I'm not the only one that, that, that really enjoys listening to everything he says. So it's not a mad, matter of, of <laughs> collaborating, but just listening to him and then forming your own ideas after that. So Nobuko has something to say. No, true. Uh, this, actually, this is the first time I didn't go to him before I started writing the song uh, because I already had Kangye in my mind. And of course, Kangye came from, uh, uh, you know, all these years of, of Obon and hearing Gathering of Joy. Uh, and in, in, in speaking to him, you know, it always deepens uh, when we speak to him. I mean, me and Elena actually have video of us sort of uh, very informally on my iPhone of uh, uh, having part of that conversation because he's such a teacher, you know, he really is a teacher and he uh, and a philosopher. So you, you just follow along with him, you, you pick up the pieces that you want to pick up some of it, and you don't agree with it, all of it, maybe. But the things that really seep in, um, you know, you try to bring that forth, because it, he, he does have a view of Buddhism uh, that, um, that is very practical. Exactly, yeah. Uh, when I first wrote the first Yuyo piece, and I was standing in the, in the plaza of the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, and they had brought together a thousand people on that plaza to do Yuyo. And I was shaking, actually, standing on the Yagura, going like, oh my God, we're going to have to sing this live and do this live. And, they just, and we started and the circle started going around and the sun was going down and it was, and it just, I felt like I was in this sea of beauty under the, and under the, under the moon and, and, and this, this village was dancing around me. And, uh, and I understood what oneness was. I experienced it right there. And so that's what I want people, excuse me, I'm being emotional. That's what I want people to feel when they do this piece. That's all. <laughs> 